welcome back to our channel. In this video, I will be comparing the dishes, what we have eaten in Czech Republic, to our German dishes. And also, I will tell you what we liked more. So now, without further ado, let's just start. Goulash is one of those dishes that you can find in many different countries here in Europe on the dining tables. And Czech Republic is not an exception here. The goulash in Czech Republic is extremely delicious. It has this lovely brown color and it's covered with a raw onions and served with two different side dishes. The beef is seasoned with paprika powder, tomato puree, garlic, myrrhum. Apart from beef, you can find onions there. Those white color dumplings are called knedliki and they are made from the instant flour, fresh yeast, sugar, milk, eggs and salt. And before boiling, you let this dough rest. On the other side of the plate, you can find potato pancakes. In Germany, we have plenty of different goulash dishes. But I want to talk about the one that uh, we make in Western Germany because this one tastes completely different as we also add red wine to it, which changes completely the taste of the sauce. Also, the German goulash is either served with potato dumplings, bread dumplings or German egg noodles. I really cannot say that the German goulash is better than the Czech one because both of them were extremely delicious but tasted differently. So it's one to one here. Another traditional Czech dish that we have tried is called Svičkova and this is beef roast that is served with extremely delicious sauce, lingonberries and also bread dumplings as you can see. Before roasting, the beef is marinated in water, vinegar, some carrots, celery sticks, onions, as well as some spices like allspice, peppercorns or bay leaf. Then the beef is braised for several hours until tender and then served with a sauce that was made from sifted vegetables and also cream. As far as my research Said, the sauce is spiced with some salt, vinegar and lemon. The meat that they use is either sirloin or tenderloin. The sauce is served with a lingonberry jam and it's on the sweeter side, which we actually loved. And what surprised us a lot is the amount of sauce that you always get on those plates. In Germany, you often need to ask for extra sauce and here you got a plenty of it. So thumbs up for this. In Germany, we've got also beef roast that is marinated in vinegar and it is called Sauerbraten. Depending on the region, Sauerbraten is made with a different marinade and also served with a different kind of sauces. The one on the screen, gingerbread sauce from Saxony, but I also know that in Cologne they make it with raisins, for example. The sauces for Sauerbraten are usually also on the sweeter side. So in Germany, we also braise or roast our uh, beef roast with vegetables, but we surely don't use them to make the sauce. We rather squeeze all the juice from them and then make the sauce from this juice. So this is typical roast sauce here in Germany. And this is another dish where I cannot decide what I liked more. Therefore, one to one again. And I want to shortly come back to the bread dumplings that they make. I have realized that they use bigger chunks of bread. Where in Germany, we would use smaller pieces of bread or bread roll to make the bread dumplings. Another traditional dish that we would like to mention is the roast duck leg that was served again with two different kinds of dumplings and red cabbage. I would say that the red cabbage is also on the sweeter side, but not as sweet as in Germany. As far as my sources say, they don't use apples like we do in Germany, but they do add sugar and caraway seeds and lard, of course. So the flavor is completely different. Those white dumplings were the knedliki that I have mentioned before and those are the potato dumplings 
and those were not as fluffy as our German ones, so we would prefer the German ones here. The roasted duck leg is traditionally spiced with salt and a lot of caraway seeds. So if you don't like caraway seeds, don't go to Czech Republic. And as you can see on the screen for my husband, it was a little bit too much. Nevertheless, the leg was extremely tender and very delicious. The sauce was pretty thin, but it didn't lack flavor. And I think if the skin was a bit more crispy, it would be as good as we do it in Germany. Another traditional Czech dish is beef tartar which is made from ground lean sirloin. In this particular restaurant, they served it pre-mixed and that was pre-mixed to perfection. The tartare had the right amount of onions, pickles, mustard, salt, pepper, paprika powder, Sersher sauce and egg yolk. I've read that in Czech Republic, some also add ketchup to it or Tabasco. Maybe that was the secret ingredient, why it tasted so good. The dish was served with beautifully toasted bread. And by the way, the bread also had a caraway seeds. And there was also fresh garlic that you can use to rub the bread. And that really makes the dish. So comparing to the German beef tartare that is served with a normal mixed bread, so the mixture of rye and white bread, in addition, the German steak tartare also consists anchovies. The Czech one is way better. I have really loved it. So 1 to 0 here, Czech tartare wins. And although we prefer German potato dumpling, those dumplings were extremely delicious. So in Czech Republic, they do filled potato dumplings uh, that are filled with a smoked meat and served with sauerkraut and sometimes even sauce. The ones we had had also deep fried onions on the top. Matthias was extremely happy with those. And by the way, the smoked meat is usually ground bacon. What a lovely idea. So yes, those potato dumplings win because we don't have something like that in Germany. In Austria, Salzburg, we have eaten a very similar dish. Those were also potato dumplings with a ground meat served with a sauerkraut, but they weren't as good as those in Czech Republic. And talking about Austria, they do have potato dumplings that are filled with apricots. And in south of Germany, you can find dumplings filled with plums. Another staple to try in Czech Republic is apple strudel, however you say that in English. The oldest recipe for this cake was found in Vienna, but the cake got very popular during the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The one we had was served with vanilla ice cream and whipped cream. The German one is also served with vanilla sauce. And we think that both of them were extremely delicious, so one to one again. Buchte is another staple to try in Czech Republic. Czech East buns are completely different to those that we serve here in Germany. First of all, they are baked and served cold and they are also filled. In Germany, Buchteln are served warm and they are usually not filled with anything, just covered with a delicious vanilla sauce. The variation of Buchteln I know is prepared in the pan and they had this wonderful sugar crust at the bottom, which really makes this dish very exceptional, as well as vanilla sauce on the top. In Bavaria and Austria, they do have a different yeast dumplings that are actually filled. They're called Gamknudel. I made those ones for our Christmas video last year, and I filled mine with a cherry sauce. Nevertheless, the dumplings are steamed, not baked, and traditionally served with a vanilla sauce or butter and poppy seeds on the top. And warm, they taste extremely well. A very similar version of them is also served in Czech Republic, but instead of vanilla sauce, they use curd cheese. And now we will be comparing the schnitzel. Similar to Germany, schnitzel in Czech Republic is also made from pork meat. It is breaded and pan-fried. 
And like in Austria, it is served with a potato salad, but this potato salad is completely different to the one that they have in Austria. The main ingredients are usually here the potatoes, celery, root, carrots, but eggs, pickles, green peas, mayo, lemon juice, Worcestershire sauce and salt. The potato salad is served also traditionally with a fried fish for Christmas. And unfortunately, the Matthias found the dish pretty dry. And I think even if the schnitzel was prepared differently and was more juicy, he would prefer the German variation of schnitzel that is always served with a topping like fried onions, cream sauce, hunter's sauce, cocktail sauce or gypsy sauce. Another thing that we will be comparing are chlebicki, which are the open-faced sandwiches. And although I have eaten many open-faced sandwiches in my life, something like that I've never eaten before. The special thing about those is that they have in the bottom, instead of usually butter, they've got this potato salad that you've seen before. The chlebicki are served with different toppings. I went for once with a ham and shredded egg. And oh my goodness, those were so delicious, especially the egg ones. And I am sure that this is because of the amount of mayo that they had. The only open face sandwich that you can buy as a street food in Germany is the bread with lard that is usually served with salt and also sometimes with pickles and fried onions on the top. And although Schmalzbrot is very delicious, you cannot compare it with the Chlebicki. Because with so many variations, they have to win this one. And the first thing that I would like to show you is this wonderful macaroon sandwich, which was made with a coconut. And this one had a very sweet coffee filling. And I need to tell you, this was way better than expected. What a great combination. It was light, small, just perfect. In Germany, we do have also this kind of uh, coconut meringue uh, cake. And those are called Kokos Macronen. They are delicious, but less spectacular. So one point to Czech Republic for Las Conca. We also went for this uh, traditional and incredible cream puff. This one had a very light, kind of a crispy pastry. It was covered with a caramel icing and filled with a caramel and vanilla custard. That dessert was extremely sweet. In Germany, there is another dish that I could compare that one to, and it's called Windbeutel. As you can see on the screen, the German cream puffs are filled with whipped cream sometimes also with different fruits or berries and sauces and sometimes they're also filled with vanilla cream nevertheless we like the czech one more sorry germany one point for czech republic and by the way the cream puffs come actually from france Another beer snack that you have to try is the Nakladane Hermelin, so it's Czech marinated cheese. The cheese that they use is very similar to Camembert or Brie. The cheese is marinated in vegetable oil and also garlic, chili pepper or jalapeno pepper, as well as paprika, thyme, peppercorn or spice, salt and bay leaves. The one that I had was cut crosswise and uh, then filled with uh, different uh, seasonings and herbs. And this just right to the beef tartar was one of the best things we tried there. In Germany, we do have another dish that is mixed with similar spices and it's called Sachsenhäuser Schneegestöber or Obatta. In Frankfurt, we make it from camembert, cream cheese, paprika powder, caraway seeds, powder and butter, as well as salt and pepper. And in Bavaria, they also add beer to it. But for me, the Czech one wins anyway. And now we will be talking about other dishes that we have tried in Czech Republic that we haven't found in any other country. And we would like to start with a typical beer snack, so the pickled sausage. 
The pickled sausage is marinated in water, vinegar, sugar, salt, peppercorns, allspice, bay leaf, as well as onion and mustard, if you like. In this variation, also with pepper and jalapeno. And that was the most interesting sausage creation that I have ever tried. So I would also highly recommend that one to you. The fried cheese is Czech and Slovak cheese-based dish that you can also find in the Czech restaurants. In the restaurant where I have had it, they used two different kind of cheese. One was the camembert and the other one was Adam. The cheese was served with a remoulade, so sauce tartare, and hard-boiled potatoes. The cheese is breaded in flour, egg and breadcrumbs and then fried. And it is also extremely delicious, so another thing for you to try in Czech Republic. And those of you who've got a sweet tooth, this is the pastry for you to try. It's filled with many different fillings. As you can see, now I had the one filled with cheese and poppy seeds. The cake had a very good amount of filling, so uh, we were very happy about it. And because it was so good, we have also tried other variations. So we had had also with uh, cheese. The one that you can see on the screen was filled with a cheese, covered with a crumbs and also filled with a blueberry jam, which was one of our favorites. I mean, what a great idea! And this one is called Creme Roller and this is probably from Austria. And as you can see, it's a tube of pastry that is uh, filled with a cream. But that wasn't a light cream that you imagine, like a kind of a whipped cream. No, that one was pretty heavy and extremely sweet. But I loved it anyway. Another cake that you have to try is the honey cake, which is one of my favorite cakes. It was popular in the countries of the former Soviet Union. As you can see, the cake is made with plenty different layers. It consists of the sponge cake that has very probably honey in it, cream filling, and also different kind of cream that I have no idea what that was. And then at the top is covered with a ground walnuts as well as rest of the sponge cake. My goodness, what a treat. And by the way, if one of you knows what that other layer is, please let us know in the comments down below. And I'm gonna mention it because it's very popular, but not really bohemian. That's kind of the spit cake that is made from the rolled dough that is wrapped around the stick and then grilled. The basic variation is topped with sugar and walnuts, but I went for the modern one that was filled with chocolate and ice cream. It was delicious, but very messy. So, what's the score? It doesn't really matter. Traditional cuisine is always and only about how it makes you feel. And to be honest, if you do like German food, you will also fall in love with a Czech one. Those are very similar considering the history of those territories. I want to say big thanks to my friend Janeta and her Czech husband and mother-in-law who did answer a lot of my questions regarding the traditional Czech food. They did make this research much easier for me. And I also hope that I didn't offend anyone with this video. That was my intent. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Now we are in the north of Germany and are filming some street food for you. And this is the last culinary trip for this year, November and December we will be spending in Frankfurt because finally I will be giving some food tours. I hope that the season will be busy. I wish you all a lovely time and I see you next week. Bye!